We're not done yet with the dual state politics. Uh, it's almost 24 hours since 38-year-old Omabaya Marvelous Godwins was sworn in as new deputy governor of the state following the impeachment of Mr. Philip Shaibu. Godwins, who hails from Akoko Edo local government area, is an engineer with a record of professional experience in the oil and gas sector and a registered member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers as well as the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, besides being a grassroots politician. However, Mr. Godwin's emergence was preceded by a turbulent turn in the political journey of the embattled, of his embattled predecessor, Philip Shaibo, whose trouble arguably started due to how events played out following his ambition to succeed his principal. the 8th April, sails the Edo State House of Assembly's pronouncement on the state's deputy governor. A premonition that his days as deputy governor of Edo State were numbered had led Mr. Philip Shaibu to as early as July 2023 approach the Federal High Court Abuja to help avert the impending loss of office. His claims were declared unfounded by the state governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki. I am not aware of any plot or any scheme to impeach the deputy governor, right honorable Philip Schreiber. I believe that this action by him is just a preemptive move to get a court order, keep his position while he now moves to the other party to get a ticket. However, when Mr. Shaibu made a public appearance on August 27 for the first time following the institution of the suit, this altercation occurred. The 60th anniversary of the Midwest referendum held in Benin City, the Edo State Capitol, revealed another crack on the wall as the deputy governor's media crew was denied access to the ceremony. Signboard appearing in front of number seven Dennis Usadebe Avenue, GRA, Benin City, on September 2, sparked rumors that the relocation from government house was imminent for the deputy governor. However, no official remarks followed this development. On 5th September, the deputy governor in a secular disclosed withdrawal of the suit at the Federal High Court. He stated that the decision to withdraw the suit came after a series of meetings involving him, Governor Obasaki, and well-meaning citizens of Edo and other Nigerians, including party leaders, traditional rulers, and the Archbishop Benin Archdiocese of the Catholic Church. On Monday, 11 September, movement of files from the Deputy Governor's office within the government house was recorded, indicating that the relocation to number seven, Dennis Usadebe Avenue, had commenced. On 18 September, however, a video of Mr. Shaibu locked out of his office within number one, Usadebe Avenue, surfaced. The governor said they should lock it. That are using the office for something else. I am not moved to anywhere. Nobody has given me letter to move to anywhere. I am nobody has given me letter. So if governor say I've moved, I have not moved. I have not moved. The governor will not give me letter. Nobody has given me letter to move. And in 2024, following the 19th March resolution of the Edo State House of Assembly, the state's judiciary set up a seven-man investigative panel to investigate allegations of misconduct leveled against the deputy governor. On the 8th of April, the panel's report is presented at the House, where it's adopted and subsequently voted on. <laughs> Well, that's how things played out for Mr. Philip Shaibu, who is now the former deputy governor of Edo State. Omabaya Marvelous Godwin is now the new deputy governor. And you can see uh, we had to chronicle that journey. Uh, since there was a time Philip Shaibu was arguably the most popular deputy governor. Today, he doesn't have that job anymore. But what really happened at the end of the day? We have to backtrack so we'll see what's going on and take a look at the future. We're being joined on the program by the Commissioner for Information and our communication and orientation uh, in uh, those state, Mr. Chris Nehikare. Mr. Nehikare, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Also joined on the program by Mr. Andrew uh, Nguyen 
Nwanta, Nwanta rather, former Edo State Commissioner for Information. Thank you, sir, for coming on the program. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Or this afternoon, I beg your uh, pardon. Mr. Nekari, let me start with you quickly. How is uh, Mr. Godwin settling in? It's uh, about 24 hours now uh, since he became Deputy Governor. Yes, yeah, settling in very well. Um, the job is a job that is there, and you are working at the pleasure of the Governor. He assigns, assigns business to you, and you treat it. And uh, the, His Excellency is working very well. I guess in the last 24 hours, he's come on. He's been on television, been on radio, he's dealing with some files that I've uh, been assigned to him, and um, so far, so good. Uh, so, so let's go back to the issue that led to the exit of uh, Mr. Philip Shaibo. Some people have said that, look, the reason why, uh, we're going to pick the issues in bits and pieces as much as time will allow us. Some people said the reason why he chose not to make an appearance personally or by his uh, representatives or lawyers at the panel that was set up after the impeachment notice was served on him and all of that was because I've been issue, he was already aware of the outcome. How would the government respond to that? Well, I don't know why he wouldn't appear. Most law-abiding citizens, when they, are, when they are invited by the House of Assembly, are invited by a properly constituted panel, they have to go there to show costs. And um, I don't know why the, deputy, the former Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu chose not to appear. And um, it's unfortunate that he did not appear. And, um, what needed to be done has been done, and what uh, the panel has no choice. If you are told to come and defend yourself and you refuse to defend yourself, then you are presumed to be guilty of whatever you are charged with. We're going to go back to some of the things that uh, constituted this particular impeachment. Let's come to Mr. M. Wanta. Uh, I want to get your first reaction to this uh, announcement uh, or this move by the State Assembly in terms of terminating the job of Mr. Philip Shaibo and getting a new man for the position. Yeah, thank you. Before I continue, let me quickly correct two impressions the Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, my uh, successor in office made. First, he talked about, oh, that the Deputy Governor is in the office of that constitutionally created position at the pleasure of the Governor. He's, as a Commissioner, he's the one that is at the pleasure of the Governor, not a Deputy Governor. The deputy governor occupies office at the pleasure of the people of those that who elected him. It's because the governor has done the wrong thing. That's why my friend, Chris Nera, can use that very catchphrase, pleasure. The deputy governor is elected. Obasaki, without the approval of the House of Assembly, brought in somebody through the back door. Section 191 of the Constitution, sub 3C says, for a person to occupy the office of deputy governor when there's a casual vacancy, it must be with the approval of the House of Assembly. He is commissioner for information. I want him to respond to that. If that young man was brought before the assembly, even before he was sworn in as a commissioner like me, he went before the assembly, he was screened. At the end of the day, the approval, the approval did not just come, it came with the support of all the members of the House of Assembly. We all presented ourselves. But in a commando fashion, immediately after the House of Assembly pronounced the impeachment of Shaibu, the governor immediately swore in somebody without following due process. We don't have a constitutional democracy in those states. What we have is a dictatorship. 14 members of the House of Assembly were prevented by this of Basaki. Unfortunately, we were there, we allowed it, and that is why he's doing what he's doing, so that Mr. President must ensure that what is happening in Edo does not repeat itself. We have a constitutional democracy. Obasaki is not the owner of Edo State. He's just one person. And on the 12th of this, um, on the 12th November this year, his tenure of office will end. Even my friend, Nekare, he used the word at the pleasure. At the pleasure of Obaseki, he will also leave government on the 12th of November this year. So what we saw yesterday was a rape of democracy, was a violation of the constitution. And for us, we are in court. He talked about, oh, the deputy governor was supposed to appear, that he was presumed, you know, um, to have been there, that the moment he fails to come, he's, he will be charged as guilty. And that was wrong. The constitution is clear. Three months is what this constitution has stipulated. For a period of three months, the panel was supposed to sit. But that panel sat in less than 48 hours. We sent a lawyer there. Before the panel even started sitting, a court gave an order. Justice I.A. Court gave an order that all the parties, the chairman and three members, the chief judge, the House of Assembly, must appear before the court to show cause why the injunction should not be granted. 
But the court said no, that the court will give an order. They quickly went ahead with the impeachment proceedings. So, so let me, the deputy governor was not invited. A copy of the impeachment notice was not served on him. But That's no, a matter on, of fact hold, hold, before the court. Hold on, Mr. Mwata. There were releases that we saw that said that the deputy governor was evading service. And so they had to substitute that service. He was invited twice and appearances were not made or represented. Is that a fact or what exactly is going on here? Those are, those are blunted lies. I'm happy my brother is there, Chris Nekari. He knows that we have official channels of communication, right? The deputy governor got ESCO papers all through the time he was deputy governor. Those were official communications. He was acting governor. He communicated with the House of Assembly using official channels. So what are they saying? They are just trying to be clever by half. They are trying to act in a legal manner, but illegally. It is only a court of competent jurisdiction that can order service by substituted means. Section uh, 188 talks about personal service uh, of the deputy me, governor, which they did not do. Because of time, let me go to Mr. Nhekari. He has hurry. raised a couple of issues. Uh, first, he's talked about the constitutionality or otherwise, that in getting a new deputy governor, the notice is supposed to go to the House of Assembly that will be notified and all of that. That was not done, so I needed to speak to that. He also spoke about the fact that there were no communication to the deputy governor. We're hearing this for the first time because we've read on the news where we saw that, where we heard that it was evasive and it was substituted service eventually and they was invited and they had to adjourn because he didn't appear and the second time and all of that. So maybe you speak to all of this gamut of issues in one fell swoop. Well, um, I think first things first, uh, my brother, Emata, I think it gets very personal and very emotional when he talks about uh, issues. And um, I think we need to talk about, he mentioned something about three, within three months, the process will go, the word within, Stipulates that it's done within three months. Three months is, I mean, three days, five days, 20 days, 90 days. Within. The panel was set up properly. The panel invited the deputy governor, not once, not twice, but at least three times. And the panel got, uh, the, not the panel now, the House of Assembly. The House of Assembly at the same time, now we've got an order for it to be invited any which way for him to get the message. And let him, we've moved on past that. The fact that his lawyer appeared at the panel, that tells us that he got the message. And that should, that should satisfy uh, a matter and uh, whatever legality is going on. I'm not a lawyer. What I do is to tell people the way it is in the right, right way. The injunction uh, Mr. Amata talks about, you and I know was not granted. Someone goes to court and tells the judge, please stop this process. The judge says, okay, I will, let me, I will consider your process, but I want you and the other party to come to court at a certain date to tell, so that you can tell me why I should grant it. That injunction has not been granted. There's nothing like that. I'm not a lawyer, but a lame man like myself and you, we all know that is the procedure. And then the panel sat. Shaibu got a lawyer who came there. If he there, was there, he refused to defend. He said he was talking about an injunction that had not been granted. You, you did not use arrogance of knowledge or arrogance of power to determine political things. You go there and, and, and uh, defend yourself. When you defend yourself, then you talk to people who will listen. Not, they don't only bring in emotions or sentiments into this matter. You know, this could have been stopped months ago. But because of this kind of attitude, where my friend, I think he may be one of those that have advised the deputy governor to take this militant role to fight not just the governor, but the whole state. He took the matters of a do state ESCO. He broke his oath of secrecy to a do state. He broke that oath. And that alone is an impeachable offense. All right, before I come to you, Mr. M. Water. Excuse me, sir. We swore to oath of secrecy. So many things. So things that we swore to. Look at oath of allegiance, oath of secrecy. We all did it. Matter did it. We all did it. And every governor did it. But then it broke that oath. It's a matter for impeachment, and it's there in the Constitution. And secondly, I don't know why a matter keeps saying Deputy Governor was voted for by Prophet It was not. When the Governor got his ticket as a party, as a party candidate, he chose his Deputy Governor. He chose him. He would have chosen anybody in a do state. He would have chosen anybody just the same way he has chosen Mr. His Excellency Omobola. I'm not by your uh, governments now. 
That's what the constituency is. <laughs> it did not, Oshaibu did not, con, did not uh, campaign to be deputy governor. He did not campaign to be deputy governor. No, he was chosen to run as a running mate. Because of time, Mr. The deputy governor is there at the pleasure of the governor. It is what is assigned to him. Um, yeah. uh, my friend uh, Mata is a lawyer. He should read the constitution of the duty. Mr. Nehikari, one more, uh, just, just in just straight question, did the governor, I'm going to go to Mr. White, who is laughing, I, I want to know why he's laughing. Um, <laughs> did the governor communicate this uh, uh, nomination or uh, picking of Mr. Godwin to the House of Assembly and did they uh, communicate back to him? Was there any form of communication? Just to put that on record. I don't know that. I don't know. It matter is putting some, some, some parts of the concern which I'm not aware of. What I know is that the governor picks his deputy governor. I don't All know right, why. Let me come to him, Mr. I want to respond. You want to respond to him. The guy asked my question. You know, he admitted that he's talking out of ignorance of the law. And I agree because Section 191, sub 2 theory, I did, sub 3 C, I didn't create that provision. And if you look at the Constitution, it's very clear. We've had it before in other states, though it's not the first state where a deputy governor would be uh, in Nigeria, where a deputy governor would be uh, removed. Even as commissioner, he would admit that before we were sworn into office, we went through the process of the House of Assembly. The governor has an attorney general. Government. Ignorance of the law cannot be excused where you have an attorney general whose office is created on such a, under Section 211 of the Constitution. It is the duty of the attorney general to advise the governor. So having violated the Constitution, can that man, in all honesty, discharge the office of the governor, or sorry, of the deputy governor. And I'm sorry to say that we have an information commissioner that is telling all the whole world that the deputy governor was not elected to the governor. When we say joint ticket, what do we mean? It's not a single ticket. Just where Baseki was elected, the deputy governor was elected. Most people voted for that ticket because of Shaibu. Nobody knew of Baseki before 2016. It was Philip, most people knew. He was a man's president. This is a man that brought so much to that ticket. He, he did a whole lot during the campaigns. And I'm surprised that information commissioner would say both of them were not elected. It was only Obaseki that was elected. The governor nominates. He does not choose. He nominates a deputy governor. So as an information commissioner, Chris Nekade should be informed. Don't come and disinform and misinform people. Right, uh, we are the national team. We should educate people. As, as we begin to wind down, Mr. Chris, let me quote the ref, let me reference the constitutional provision that Mr. Enwata is talking about, Section 191, subsection 3C. Uh, so where the office of the deputy governor becomes vacant, sub C says, for any other reason, the governor shall nominate and, with the approval of the House of Assembly of a state, appoint a new deputy governor. That's the provision of the law. Uh, you Great. say you don't know whether that was communicated. You want to respond to that before I ask the next question? I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you something. The, uh, by the time the deputy governor was removed, there was a few hours in between. We cannot stay and speculate because it was there was no fanfare at the House of Assembly that this is what's going on. And I can tell you because I've spoken because I matter made this same argument a few hours a few uh, yesterday, and I called him, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker said he was aware. The majority of the other said they were aware. <laughs> also, when no, they no, were no, aware, no. what you're saying... Mr. Nehikari, the fact is that there's a new deputy governor. We're just speaking to process. The language of the Constitution exactly. says, nominate and with the approval of the House of Assembly. But be, let's leave all of that. I just needed to put the law. <laughs> He's a lawyer, but we needed to quote the law for you. But where does this leave the entire... Because your, your party is going for an election. All of you now are members of the PDP. Uh, you're going for yeah. an election, and this issue of infighting has been on. I know that the governor had, had issue with his predecessor, Oshomole, uh, he's had issue with uh, Governor Wike that was instrumental to his emergence in the second term, and now with, uh, 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 with the deputy governor that is now impeached, Philip Shaibu himself has also had issue with Oshomole. So it's been a gamut of issues, it's, polit it's politics, but where does this leave everyone? Maybe you, both of you speak to it as we wrap up the program. Mr. Nekari, let me start with you, ahead of the elections. Well, we are a political party. We do not, our party does not revolve on one, one person or a couple of people. We have lots and lots of people in our party. Our new deputy governor is also from this state. He has no political influence. So as a political party, we keep reaching out to everybody to join us to make sure we win the next election. That we'll continue to do, and that's what we are doing. You know, we, are, we, don't, we don't have the, the arrogance like, the, or like my friend is so sentimental. We don't have that arrogance to say we will win or we will lose. No. 
We keep preaching out to Edo people. We keep telling Edo people what we have done. We keep having a message to sell to them. We have to believe that we have the best of the candidates, that we have the best of the programs, and we have their best interests at heart. That's what we do. We are not sentimental. The reason why they're fighting or they, they, they are up in arms against the government is because they have refused to share the money and use the stands. They have been using all the resources of the state for the development of the state. That is it. There's nothing else. There's nothing well, else. There's nothing else. Let, let me say, has it done well in education? Yeah. Has you it made done well in, uh, in uh, all, the, all the parameters to measure good governance? We have Mr. Nekare, you made, an, uh, you made an allegation. Let me start in water and I'll respond. Because of time, my apologies, Mr. In water, you can respond. And I know that you said you're going to court. So uh, I don't know. What are you filing in court? Because Section 188... Uh, that, I think section 13, subsection 13 also, or uh, 11, talked about what constitutes misconduct. Is that where you're going to? And maybe you respond to that allegation as well as we wrap up. No, we are already in court. And uh, just like in the larger judge case, after the illegalities were committed in Adeliki and uh, in uh, Minakuja and Adeliki, the court, the Supreme Court said the impeachment was illegal. We're in court, so I will not start re 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 releasing our firepower here. Yeah? But just to say that um, in, the, in the in the situation where the rule of law is jettisoned, anarchy becomes a sole beneficiary. There's a lot less less in those states. You said uh, we are members of the same party. I don't belong to their party PDP. I left their party last year when I realized the governor was becoming a complete godfather. It was becoming lawless. It was becoming directionless. He talks about sharing money. The people who impeached Shaibu was it uh, water they gave them? He talks about the governor does want to share money. We know what was involved. We went. We know what went down. In this impeachment, over a billion naira was spent. From last year, this journey started. Groups were hired. We know what happened. Senior advocates that have been involved in cases, we know how much they have paid them. Five of them were in court the last day. So we know what the government is doing. Is there no taxpayers' money that is going down the drain? Right. People who travel to the Kangaroo uh, in, in inauguration they did yesterday, we know how much went down. So for right. us, Edo people will make a decision on the 21st of September this year. And on Basaki's right. 10th ambition, Will be giving a fatal blow because he wants to bring in a surrogate that will use to perpetuate himself for one more term in office and we will say uh, no to that on the 21st of september all right gent gentlemen at the end of the day it's been counter allegation allegations and counter allegations but i must thank both of you for coming on the program apparently this is not the end of the conversation you have an election ahead of you so we'll be dragging uh, all of you into the studio time and again to have this conversation uh chris Neikare, commissioner for communication and orientation, as well as a former Edo Commissioner for Information, Mr. Andrew Enwata. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thank, Thank you, you for having us.